what they do. They're poor in the area of handling, handling situations that they can't get over anymore. They're, they're poor in their thinking process. They're poor in the way they handle business. They're poor in the way they handle money. They're poor in their attitudes. They're poor in a lot of different areas. So he says, good news to the poor. So you don't have to be poor in that area anymore. That's good. How can you not be poor in that area anymore? Because of the anointing. See, the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Yeah. Now, the burden removing, burden, burden, burden is that I'm poor. It's a burden. Mm -hmm. It's a burden to be poor. How do you know it's a burden to be poor? It's a burden to be poor. It's a burden to be poor because you can only make, you can only make a limited amount of decisions when you're poor. So burden removing is to give you the ability to have now more options. And so, so burden removing is one part of it. Then yoke destroying. A yoke destroying person in poverty is going in a particular direction because poverty is over here and they're over here. Yoke together. It's like having a wooden noose around my neck and a wooden noose around their neck over here. Poverty on that side over there. And this thing's got us tied together and the, and the yoke is just kind of taking me like oxen. If this thing turns left, I got to go left. If I turn, try to turn right, I can't go because I'm not strong enough. But see, the anointing not only removes the burdens, it destroys the yoke. So when the yoke is cut off, then I can go the direction of the Holy Ghost. I can go the direction that I'm being led by. So I'm no longer bound by the yoke that's upon me any longer, but I am free to be able to walk in this of life for real. I can see God taking yokes off people right now. I can see God taking yokes off nooses off people's necks right now. That they're being severed and destroyed and torn apart so they can walk in freedom again. I don't want to be bound any longer. People are going to be tired of being bound. But when they get the anointing, the anointing comes upon them. Something begins to change in their lives. Yes. And when it begins to change, you know it. Because you're no longer walking with this burden anymore. You're no longer work walking with this yoke around your neck anymore. It's the power of God that has released you to be free. So that's what the gospel is for. That's what the anointing is for. Because it's anointing me. To preach the gospel. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You can have a broken heart and not even know it. Because it becomes normal. Hmm. Hear me, hear me, hear me. You can have a broken heart and not even know it. Mm -hmm. Because it becomes normal. But when, once you're healed, you know it. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You hear me. You see, once you're healed of a broken heart, you know it. When your life suddenly changes and you have no control about what just happened and you want to do everything you can to try to make it different and you can't and other folks are depending on you and you can't help them either. And other folks are wanting to go ahead and go in another direction, and you can't help them either. You see, they have a broken heart, but you don't realize that you have got a broken heart too. In that brokenness, the anointing is come to heal the broken heart. So when the broken hearted get healed, guess what the broken hearted go and do? They take the very same anointing and they go help to heal the broken heart. Because once your heart's been broken and your heart's been healed, you can now go and do likewise because you experience what it is to be healed. You, walk, you, you know and understand that it's no longer I who live for real, but it's Christ who lives in me. It's no, no longer me who stands at, uh, amazed at this thing called the anointing any longer because it's for other folks. It's for me. It's for you. It's for us to have this anointing that heals broken hearts. There are far too many believers that hang on to broken hearts, that live with broken hearts. And there are far too many believers that don't care. That's good. Because they truly don't respect the anointing. Mm -hmm. Jesus respected the anointing because he had gone through the same things. Watch this. He had gone through the same things that people were tempted by. <clears throat> Spirit, soul, and body is tempted. We're tempted in the same kind of areas. He said that number three is this. Uh, verse number, what number the verse said. Verse 8. He says, he ascended to the broken heart, proclaim liberty to the captives. 
liberty, liberty to a captive person, someone that's bound somewhere, someone that's bound in a situation that they can't get out of. There are people bound in bad relationships. There are people bound in bad jobs. People are trying to wait till they retire and get out of this bad job situation. They're bound and they can't get out of it. People are bound in situations that they just seem to think, think that, I don't know what in the world I'm going to do here in the, pro in the process. Watch, watch this part. He says he proclaimed liberty to the captives. I want you to hear this. Proclaiming is to say it loud. Mm -hmm. Proclaiming is to speak it out of your mouth. It's not necessarily doing anything other than that. That's proclaiming. So in this case, proclaiming liberty to the captives is telling a captive person that you're free. You're free to go. You're free to be in a place where you're, that you can be different now. But they're saying, I'm still captive. I'm still behind bars. Paul and Silas is in jail. Or are in jail. Paul and Silas are in jail. Earthquake comes and Paul and Silas have a chance to escape. They are captive, right? Mm -hmm. They are captive. They chose not to leave because they were not captive in their spirits. Ha. That's good. They were not captive in their spirits. See, to be captive, he says, to proclaim liberty to the captives is not so that the situation changes all, the way, all of a sudden. Because situations don't always change, do they? So we can be captive in a free environment. Ah! We can be free and be captive. But he says, I'm proclaiming liberty to the captive. And that means that if you're now captive in your external environment or your internal environment, I want you to be, understand that you are free and whom the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. And so he sets us free. He sets us free that we're no longer captive. No, no matter if the situation changes around us and we still feel captive. He says, hear this, liberty to the captives has been proclaimed to you. Has been proclaimed to you. Then move on. He says, a recovery of sight to the blind. Not just blind physically, but blind in every, any other capacity of life. Blind to your vision in life. Blind to the things that God has promised you. Blind to the things that you've been believing God for. Blind to situations that are right in front of you. There have been things that I've seen right, I mean, the things have been right in front of me and I couldn't see. I, I, mean, I don't know if it's ever happened to you before, but there have been things right in front of me. And I missed it. <laughs> Telling myself here. I had my phone. And I uh, was here last Saturday at the church. Not this Saturday. Saturday before. And I have been missing my phone. I've been missing my phone. I've been missing my phone. I've been missing my phone. So where is my phone? I don't know where it is. Well, it must be lost. Of course, it's right in my car. Sitting right here where I sometimes put it. <laughs> but because it blended in with the black and gray seats that I have there, it just looked right there. But, but this time I saw it clearly. I looked down and said, oh, there's my phone. I looked there before, didn't see the phone. I looked there about 10 times, never saw the phone. <laughs> Recovery of sight to the blind. Mm -hmm. I had my glasses on too, and I could not see the phone. <laughs> Really? Couldn't see the phone, couldn't see the phone, couldn't see the phone, but all of a sudden it's up. That's an example, just an example. But in our lives, we have our life, we can recover, we, we, we can recover, we choose yeah. to recover. He said, he says, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Now here's a different spin on the, the, uh, the liberty aspect, okay? To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Those, now this, this is different because proclamation is one thing, to set at liberty is a different thing. To proclaim liberty is to say it out loud. Captives, you're free. To set at liberty is to make something happen hmm. where you are walking away from it. Well, that's good. Yeah. To set at liberty is to, say, to not only to say something, but to do something that is a tangible result that you've been looking for or been desiring or need and don't even know it. Those who are oppressed don't even know they're, they're oppressed sometimes. Just like the brokenhearted. A person oppressed being pressed down, pressed down, pressed down, and pressed down, and walking around like everything is okay. Just oppressed, 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 oppressed. But he said, to set at liberty, those people, watch this part, set them at liberty is to, be, is to place them somewhere else. A new state of being. Not oppressed, but possessed by the Spirit of God. Not oppressed, but impressed by the Spirit of God to move forward. Not oppressed, but being able to move in newness of life now for real. To not oppress, not doubt it out anymore, but to be moved away from that. To be moved away from a situation that you don't need to be in any longer. I don't want to be oppressed. 
I don't want to be oppressed. I want to be uh, set free of that. To be set at liberty, those who are oppressed. He said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, we often think about it being a year or some time, a time factor involved here. But the, the anointing is for proclaiming the foundation. The foundation has been laid for sinners to, to be received by Christ. You see, the anointing did that very thing because now sinners can be able to re be receiving Christ or, or set the foundation for sinners to receive Christ because of what Jesus went through. If he would have just stopped at the baptism and didn't go through the wilderness experience, we would uh, appreciate the baptism but not know about the wilderness, not know that he overcame in the wilderness. How many are you glad that he overcame in the wilderness? Mm, yes. How many understand that because he overcame in the wilderness, you can overcome in your wilderness experience as well. Because of what? The anointing. The same one that he left here. He said, I'll, I'll pray the Father, send you the Spirit, right? And so the Spirit of God shows up as a result of Jesus' prayer for us. The same Spirit that, that, that led him around. The same Spirit that, that walked with him in, in the wilderness right there. The same one that lives on the inside of us. So we're, we're pleased and, and we, 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 should be play, we should be excited about the fact that we've got the anointing on the inside of us. So the anointing is for uh, sort of proclaiming the foundation has been set or laid for sinners to be received by Christ. It's the redemptive plan of God in full force is what it is. So we see the anointing being preached nowadays, the anointing being preached to the poor. We see the anointing of uh, seeing hearts being mended. We see the, the anointing liberating the captives. We see the anointing uh, opening up blind eyes. We see the anointing helping the oppressed be free and liberated. So when the anointing does that, it sets the stage for people to get saved. Watch this. You see when miracle signs and wonders come? I talked about way maker, miracle worker. See, that, that, that song itself was letting us know that this way maker, this miracle worker, Jesus, has already set the stage that folks can be free. When the poor are, the gospel is preached to the poor, they have an opportunity now to be on a foundation that allows them to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. When a broken hearted person is healed, what better miracle in their life to be able to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the one that healed them? When the, uh, when the, the, the folks that are liberated, that are, cap that are captive, are now proclaimed that you are free. You're free. You're free. You're free. You hear that enough times, you're going to begin to believe that. Faith comes by what? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. As the Word of God is preached by the anointing, things begin to change. And recovery of sight of the blind. The folks begin to hear that. That helps them understand that this foundation has been laid for me not to be blind anymore. So therefore I can know this. The one that set me free from being blind, I can receive him now as my Savior. See, the foundation has been laid. This anointing that we talk about today, this burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God is for every believer. Jesus was an example of it. We see again, we go back to the time when John the Baptist baptized him. Spirit came upon like a dove, gentle dove. It seems like a very peaceful moment. You experience that in your life sometimes where peace comes upon you like that way. But more so than anything else, we probably experience a lot more wilderness opportunities. We experience wilderness situations. As we go through, well, watch this, as we go through them, knowing that we can overcome them, is a thought process we ought to have. Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon us because He's anointed us. And you can just stop with that right there and understand that because you're anointed, every situation of life, everything that's going on in life that is contrary to the will of God, the Word of God, we can overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony. I'll close with this. We sometimes we get wrapped up into the time factor. This time factor. When is God going to finally do what he said he's going to do? What we ought to be wrapped up in is the promise factor. Mm -hmm. When we are wrapped up in the promise and focusing on the promise, the time becomes, I'll say this word out loud, it becomes irrelevant when we're really wrapped up in it. Mm -hmm. But when we're wrapped up into the time factor, how long will I suffer? How long will I, will I go through this situation? How long will this take me to get free from this? And how long and how long and how long and how long? 
and say, how long will the promise be for me? The promise is for his children now. His promises are yes and in him, amen. Mm -hmm. His promises are in him, yes and amen. So be it. Yes. And when we understand that part of it, we can walk in that newness of life. We can walk in that place of the anointing being present with us. The Bible says he's an ever-present help in when? In the time, time of, of trouble. trouble. In the time of trouble. Let, let's, 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 let's be real about this. We all deal with trouble. Constantly. Mm -hmm. And you say constantly. Some of us have never known as much trouble as we've, as we've known recently. That's right. mm -hmm. Some of us have never experienced as much trouble as we've seen in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And because of the anointing, when we concentrate on who we are, I'm his beloved. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, he loves me that way. I, I'm, in, I'm a child of God, heir of God, joined up with Jesus Christ. I, Son of God, I'm walking in the of life here together. I'm a, I'm a child of the living King here. So, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. And okay, I got, I'm getting all this, but I've got to get past my thinking mm -hmm. and let it rest here and see God move. That's good. He wants to change us. His anointing wants to rest upon us. His spirit rests upon us. His anointing is here for a reason. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful.